Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with a quick video tutorial with Saturn 2 from FabFilter. Now I've done a walkthrough video of this, all of the new features in this newest updated version. If you want to check that out, click the link in the video description that will bring you to my blog where you can watch that video. But in this video, I'm just going to show you something specific and that is how to get glitchy drums. You can see here I've got uh, the smudge effect doing a little bit of automation down here with some XLFOs. And if I go ahead and play it for you, these are the drums. So that kind of like is like it's it's getting automated. It's pushed out to the left and the right. It's a little bit different every time because of the way we've got things routed here. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So I'm going to jump in here and let's just go into default settings. Sweet. We've got a ton of new different saturation and distortion types, and I'm gonna just jump into the effects folder and come down to Smudge. Now, Smudge was in the first version too, and it works pretty much the same way, so. So, I mean, you can get some really gnarly sounds out of that and imagine processing vocals or bass or synths or whatever you want with this. But I really like to use it to add subtle glitchy character to my percussion and my drums. Generally, when I'm doing this, I'll be using it on my percussion bus, not my kick and stuff. But because this is a multi-band device, I don't really need to worry about it. I just have to add a second band and then choose my crossover position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while the audio is playing. You can kind of see that right here is where that snare is. So depending on whether or not you want to affect that is where you're gonna put this crossover position. So I'm actually gonna just take it. Right about there is fine. If I come over here, I can either turn the wet all the way down or if I click right here, I can just completely bypass any of the effects. So the band is still gonna uh, have audio pass through it, but it's just gonna be unaffected. Sweet, so let's jump over to this band and... So even if you just add a little bit of smudge and pull the mix down over here, I mean, you just breathe character into it. And because, you know, a percussion generally has a lot of intricate details anyway, this is just a good way to expand that. Or if you don't have a lot of those intricate details, this is a good way to add that. What I want to do is have this happen at the end of, say, every two bars. I want it to kind of come in, do a little bit, and then go away for the rest of it. So what we're going to do is add a modulation source down here at the bottom with the XLFO. And if I come over here, I can actually click to add more steps, essentially. So now I have four steps. And right now it's on free time, but I want this to happen on every two bars. And for the first three bars, I want this to be as low as it can go. So essentially off. And we can actually change the type of curve in here. Uh, the value will change like from top to bottom over here. If I click right here, I can actually change the kind of the slope here. I can go linear and you can see that it's uh, pretty straight. Uh, and this is probably the one we want to use because I really only want the effect to happen for the fourth step over here. Let's come over to that fourth step and instead of having it be like that with the sine wave, uh, let's, let's turn it like that. So really, we're getting a lot more of what we're looking for for just the end of those two bars. So depending on how long you want it, you set that here and then you set up kind of the steps like that. And then what we do is just click and drag and drop that to the drive position. So you can see here that as it moves, that's what's happening. Uh, for the first three steps of that, it stays down and then towards the end, it comes in. So if I click right here, I can adjust the value or how far it goes. And if I pull down, I mean, essentially it could be off if I do this and then it'll just come in real quick like that. Let's see what that sounds like. So actually that sounds pretty good like that. You know, maybe set the mix to 50% so we're not taking away any of the dry signal, but we're just adding the affected signal. 
And let's just crank it up even more just to see what it sounds like. I mean, that sounds pretty good, right? So maybe that's where you'd want to stop, but I'd like it to be a little bit more subtle, so I'm going to show you how I would go about doing that. I also want to modulate um, this out here. So there's actually two parameters here. The one in the middle is the main drive, and then there's the one on the outside, which is the drive pan. And watch what happens if I move this while the effect is happening. Actually, let me go ahead and um, just disable it for a second. So it's taking the effect and pushing it out into the stereo field to the left or the right. So if we automate that parameter, we can get some really cool results. And again, as we're just trying to add extra character, I think that's a really good way to do it. Also, control click to get anything back to its ori uh, original position. I'm going to right click or click right here again, come into here and enable it and pull it back down. And for this, I don't want it to happen like this. I kind of just want it to randomly be fluctuating to the left and to the right. Again, just to add that extra bit of interest. So I'm gonna come into XLFO again and actually delete the second step. Oh, Come into here and click right here. And I can actually get rid of this. So I just have this one step. And if I click that one step and set it to random, it will fluctuate randomly. I don't have access to the value parameter right here. It will just move around. So let's take that. And you can see things get snapped to if it's able to be modulated. So right now this would modulate the drive, but I want to come down here to the bottom. And that's how I can modulate the panning effect. And you can see it moving over there. And if I click right here again, I can boost up how far that goes in terms of um, values. You can also do it up here at the top, or you can do it, I believe, over here as well. So there are different ways and different uh, positions you can evaluate these parameters or set these parameters. Clicking right here will just send it in the opposite direction. You can get rid of them. You can click down and actually choose what you want to route if you don't want to do drag and drop and so on and so forth. Or if you just want to hot swap it, uh, there's that way to do it as well. So now we've got a lot cooking. Let's see what happens when we play the audio now. Very, very cool. Um, we might, again, because I'm going for subtle, I wouldn't go that far with the drive. I only want it to come in a little bit. And then I'd also take the same XLFO and modulate the mix wet and keep it down pretty far and maybe do something like this so it gets up close to 50% just when that's happening. So you hear that that particular one, and it's going to be different every time because of how we have the modulation set up, but that particular little panning left and right with the kind of smear sound was perfect, in my opinion, for what I'm trying to do with this effect. It's just, it's very minor, right? But for adding character to your sounds it's just perfect and i'm you know i'm really excited to share it with you i use quite often i've been using this technique since version one i actually did a similar video for version one many years back again i'll leave a link to that on the blog too if you want to check it out if you only have uh, version one of saturn but i just wanted to share it with you here in the newest updated version it still sounds awesome i still use it all the time and i figured i'd share it with you guys anyway click the link in the video description if you want to check everything else out and uh, I'll see you in the next video.